Psalms chapter 67 to the chief musician on Nigeroth, which is a string instrument, a psalm or song. God be merciful unto us. The wonderful great prayer. A demand. You don't want the wrath of God. And I tell you, there's, this is a short psalm, so I'm going to get into it. There are people that desire the day of the Lord. And I believe as Amos tells, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. It's a day of dark. That's the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not the day you want. The day you want is the day when the Lord blows a trump. He meets us in the air. That is not the day of the Lord. you got to get the two correct. Merciful be, uh, for God to be uh, is does not give us all that we deserve. He heals us and takes care of us and seeks our, our good welfare and bless us, makes us happy. What makes you happy? And then let me ask you a question. What makes you happy? Think of the last time you got happy about something. Who did you give the credit to? Should have been to God. Well, somebody such and such. Yeah, but that's such and such. They all, the foundation of everything comes from God. <coughs> we never thank God for us, for Him blessing us and being merciful to us. Now, birthday is not a Bible thing. But do you realize every year you get older that God's been merciful to you? That God has left you here another year, a new year to start, that he has need for you. And I'm talking to Christian. Because had you, had you lived to your birthday or any day, waking up tomorrow is... God, Christians now, and I'm talking to unsaved people, I'm talking to born-again Christians. Waking up tomorrow is God saying, I need you today. I ain't done with you. If God was done with you, he'd take you home. Blessing us, giving us good things, pleasing us. He doesn't have to. Look what Satan gives, gives his people. And they're all happy, happy hour, happy this, happy that. And you know what? They're not. God gives us a pure happiness that's holy, that stays with us, that we don't have to buy it. And cause his face, God's face, to shine upon us. Well, I haven't seen God's face. God's the spirit, and they that worship must worship him in spirit and truth. Yeah, this is written in the Old Testament, too. They didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the psalmist here saying? <clears throat> the mercifulness and the blessfulness is, is God looking upon you, even though you can't see him. God is present in your life. That's what it's saying. See love. Tribulation, Second Advent, Millennium Passage is coming up. Well, after all the tribulation period that is going to happen, when you read the book of Revelation and Daniel, the seven, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, uh, the three woes, and the seven seals, the, the Antichrist with anger and and deceit and all power and rage seeking the Jew, Revelation 12, that God hides them, being merciful to them. Listen, they rejected God. They killed God, Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus Christ. And they said, we'll have Caesar. And then all the blessfulness, the happy times will come in the millennium for those Jews. And his face to shine on us? What about when the Lord Jesus Christ picks them up on his way back in the second advent? 
that thy way, God's way, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, may be known upon the earth. So go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the way, the truth, and the life. That saving health among all nations. Well, that would be in a millennium. When health, and the curse is removed and the health, it, 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 I mean, it'll be, Obama won't have a plan for, for the millennium. You won't, somebody, well, well, pick up a copay. Well, what was that? You won't be selling health insurance in the millennium. You won't need it. You won't need shots and uh, uh, anything. No hospitals. In the millennium, the curse is gone, except for, for for snakes, according to the scriptures. They'll still eat the dust. The curse of Genesis 3. How about that? No ambulances. No paramedics. No band-aids. No pharmacies. Let me keep going. But you got to go through seven years of hell under the Antichrist to get there. Or you can just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior right now and believe in thy heart that God's raised him from the dead and confess that he is your Lord and Savior, that you wash away your sins and put it all upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, to know that that is the only way to get out of hell. And you know what? You may live, if you live right, you may live... And suffer here. But when the rapture happens. Or when you die to be absent from the body. To be present with the Lord. Your time of misery. Ends. Either your death. Or the rapture. For the born again Christian. Misery ends. Sorrow. Sticks around. You'll be stewed tears after Revelation 20. Pain and suffering is gone. You may suffer now. I ain't going to give you no blown up gospel. You want perfect health? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior right now. I have the cure for cancer. I have it. But nobody wants to listen. The cure for, for cancer is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as thy Savior. Will that make the cancer go away? No. But that will affect what the cancer does to you and your body. Well, I want, the, I want it to go away. What gives you that right? We read about the God who's merciful and will bless you to make you happy. The cure for all ailments. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. What kills you? Not cancer. Being hit by a Greyhound bus will not kill you. Jumping off the Empire State Building and landing on the street below will not kill you. The method of death is by sin. Sin kills. Cancer, being hit, heart attack, hardened arteries, natural causes are only little subcategories under sin. See, it's not the cure for cancer. It's the cure for sin. Because if it wasn't cancer, it could be AIDS. If it couldn't be AIDS, it may be a boil. If it's not a boil, it may be a tumor. And if Christians, if you're soaking money into these programs, oh, let's find a cure, let's find a cure, and they're not telling them about Jesus Christ, 
You are soaking your money into something that's wrong. When we're talking about health. Health is in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, they that, need, they that are sick, that need, uh, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But if you go back to one of the kings, Asa, who had a foot disease, and he said he sought the doctors more than he sought God. You want a cure for cancer? I tell you what you do. At every chemotherapy, listen, I've been through this. Not me personally. In every chemotherapy place where they do it, have a Bible preacher in the room, have Bible prayer, and witness to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And explain to him if it doesn't work, what death means. Tell them where they're going to go if, if, if there's no cure. Then let the Lord do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. You're not going to, if you're not going to put seed out there, don't expect the harvest to come in. Don't expect the gracious, merciful God to start blessing this country with, you know, unailments. 100%ness. And then not give the glory to God. We got a health care system in this world that my jury of it is godless. It's corrupt. We got doctors that are in America that are of godless religions. You got doctors in America that their religion is to take blood, especially from Christians. You got people that are in the health care, uh, trade, whatever you want to call it, occupation, because the money is good. How about for health, if when they're in the operating room, they finish the procedure, it went well, why don't you get the surgeon and the anesthesiologist and the nurses that help and the people that are there? Okay, let's all bow our heads and give God the creator. Oh, maybe they don't believe he's the creator. Let's give him the glory and thanks for this patient. And let's pray for our next one. Can you imagine a surgeon? I'm going to be out right now. Can you imagine a surgeon? He's about to do a boob job on some Hollywood star. Can you imagine him and everybody bowing their head? Oh, Lord, please help us get these boobs nice and big so I can get my big money. How about a surgeon getting in there, an operation that's not needed just to get the insurance money? Health comes by God. Well, I know Christians that are, are sick. and uh, Listen, I, I've heard from preachers that entire life, 50, 60 years spent in a hospital bed. And you wait till you see the benefits when they go home to be with the Lord. When I was first saved, I knew a guy who was in a wheelchair. He had no legs. And he come up to me, he says, Stiley, he says, one day I'm going to be running and jumping in heaven. I'm like, I was just saying, I'm like, okay, this guy, he's out there. When I read the Bible and studied the Bible, I realized we're going to get a brand new body. Then I knew what he was talking about. You know, scientists and medical field will not give you a new body. The only thing they'll do is they'll give you a higher bill. You know, if they did have the cure, whatever it was, you wouldn't be able to afford it. 
Let the people praise thee. That's the problem with the health care. No one's praising God. I want to thank my doctor. Well, what about God? This hospital was such a good... What about God? Where does he get the credit? He's the creator. He's the one that designed these bodies. He's the one that allowed whatever it was to affect your body. He was the one to be merciful to you and blessed you for you to be happy that the results came out cleaner or better or if not healer. Oh, we got a problem with health too and religion. We got a bunch of morons out there, you know, sticky underarms, knocking people over and, and handkerchiefs and send this money and oh, with a prayer card and do all this and that and to be healed. And ruin the faith of many. And destroying the faith of much. And destroying the works like I try to do on the street. And as my pastor tries to do in the church. And as I try to do here on the internet. Somebody will turn me off because of some faith healing Minister who condemned. And I will never hear from. God. I will never hear or listen to or have anything to do with God again. Or knows that a faith here is a con. And well, you know that's all religion. So I'm not going to listen to that. Let the people praise thee. Where is the praise belonging to God? I want to praise God right now. This morning I was not able to read my Bible. I had been given two antibiotics, and both of them together, or one, whatever it was, I could not see the words of my Bible yesterday, and I could not see the words of my Bible today. They were cloudy. I'm not saying I was blind or anything like that. It was just cloudy. And God, but, but not taking that pill. Ooh, I didn't take the pill. Praise the non-pill. No, praise God that I can read and do this. There was no message last night on this. For two reasons. I couldn't see. <laughs> and then I was in bed sick. And number two reason was God put off time, did not want me to do la this last night. He wanted to do it to me now. I give God the credit I can see. He's blessed me and made me happy. And this is, listen, folks, when we start our family uh, Bible, about 7 o'clock, when we start, and I started reading as we're going along, reading as a family, listening to be read to it, I could, hey, you know, I could see the words. And I was making notes while we were having the Bible read to us. And I'm thanking God, I'm praising God, and give God the glory. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. All the people. The unsaved. When are you going to hear an unsaved person today give God the glory? Well, I heard this Roman Catholic friend. Listen, her God, his God is Mary. Or the Pope. It ain't God of the Bible because they do everything in that church that defies the Bible. Huh? Well, I have a person who's a Lutheran. Yeah, I have a person who's a Lutheran, Catholic, a Jehovah Witness, moron. They're all religion. God is not religion. Religion is man-made, so you're praising man. God is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone with the Holy King James 1611 authorized version of the Bible. That salvation is by Jesus and Jesus alone, no works. That's someone who gives God the glory. And that's a verily, verily, verse 3. 
You say, well, what do you mean by that? When Jesus verily, verily, when the Bible repeats something a second time, it is very important. You know what's very important? Praise God. That is very important. That's a double no. When God writes it twice, you better watch out. Oh, let hmm? six four. Oh, let the nations. All right, the Old Testament. This is written to Jews. This is a Jewish book. God's people are the Jews. Not Americans. Jews are the ones above all nations. The Bible is written for three groups of people. Jews, Christians, born again, and anybody who's not. This is written to the nation, to non-Jews. That's written to you and me, Gentiles. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Oh, yeah, they are glad to sing for joy. For what? Don't tell me it's God. For thou, there's God. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou, that's God. Shall judge the people righteously. God is the righteous judge. He will not be bribed. He will not, you know, you, you do a little finger, show your, your ring or any of that other kind of junk. He's not going to look at your last name and say, Ooh, have to change the judgment for that family. No, God of the Bible, God, the Holy God, if you are guilty, you are guilty. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And governs, govern, the nations upon the earth, Sila, millennium. That's a, that's after the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ. After the tribulation period, there's a thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, seated upon David's throne. He's going to rule the whole entire world. Then the nations are going to sing for joy. Blessing. That's the blessing. And be glad. That's the blessing. And sing to the merciful God. The sheep nations. God ain't, well, as far as governing the nations of the earth, Satan is in control, Matthew 4, Luke 4. Satan is the God of this world right now. You wait till Satan is bound up for that thousand years and God is able to do all without Satan's hindrance. There will be a time. Let the people again all praise thee. Where is the praise of America? Where is the applause and the, and the excitement and the gratuity? Sports events, all of them. Anything to do with Hollywood. A movie theater, there are little trophies they give out. Graduations, weddings. America has all the things for holidays.
Let the people praise thee, O God. Where is the praise for God? We've got a day for present dead presidents. We have an MLK day, a July 4th day. I don't know what we're independent from. We left England for American uh, tyrancy. We got a Labor Day, which we don't work on. We got Bales Day. That's another name. You know it as Christmas. We got an Easter Roman Day. We got a Secretary's Day. We got a Kiss Your Dog on the Mouth Day. You got, you know, Floss Your Teeth an Extra Time Day. You've got, you know, Hug Your Postman Day. What day do we have for God? Don't say it. Don't you dare say Thanksgiving. That's not for God no more. You praise the turkey and the one that cooked it. Okay. On Thanksgiving, do you, as an entire family, even though they're lost, do you... Ask God to bless the meal and be in front of those lost family members. You know, I haven't been invited to some of my families because I pray. In front of the lost family members. Do you pray the other 100, the 364 days with your family at the dinner table? Listen, dinner the table today, they're at the table. One's at the basketball game, one's getting her hair done, the other one's at the, at the fish and tackle store, and the little girl's at the dance school. Don't think Thanksgiving, because the American public school has ruined the entire uh, history. And if you're going to study the history of uh, the pilgrims in the Indies to realize they came over here with the Geneva Bible in the name of God from persecution. And a lot of the stories I grew up with about the pilgrims and Indians were were wrong still. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Look at that. That's four times in that verse 3 and verse 5. You know what God wants? He wants to praise. How many Christians in America missed last Sunday night because of a ball being thrown back and forth, back and forth between 100 uh, yards? How many Sundays are missed by Christians because idiots who can't turn right go around a circle 500 times and don't get dizzy and waste fuel? Oh, but they're Christians. Oh, that, that player is a Christian playing that game on a Sunday, racing that car on a Sunday, on the church night? Well, you know, our church don't have Sunday night service. Did you read how long Paul preached with Eutychus? Eutychus falls out the window and died, so, or resurrected. Paul got up and preached all night long on the Lord's day. Don't give me noon. Well, we got to go home at noon before our carriages turn into pumpkins or something. You can't even give God all day. And you know why these churches are closing up? Because you can't give God your money because they can't afford the extra you know, electricity for the Sunday nights and the Wednesday nights to, to keep going. But Walmart's doing good. I've never heard of a bake and tackle place ever close up. You know, churches are closing up. Four times we are told, black and white, to praise God. 
Then shall the earth yield her increase. The millennium. Again, when you read the Bible, it says that one's going to be planting a seed, and right behind them, instantly you're going to get the fruit. Now that's a blessing. You know, you don't have an increase of food today. You got a scientific blog. From what they feed the animals to what they put into the food, it's blog. That ain't a real chicken you're eating. That thing is chemically fed and then chemi chemical induced. You wait till you taste a watermelon or a tomato in the millennium. Now I I know I'm not one. Well, I'm half. I don't know if Christians are going to eat. There's some out there. You know we're going to have a table spread and go 400, 400 billion miles long. We're just going to eat, 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 eat. I don't know. If it is there, amen. If it's not, okay. So they're not going to disappoint me. Well, if there's an opportunity for me to eat in the millennium as a born again Christian reigning somewhere, just give me the tomatoes. I'd love to taste a tomato without a curse. And and by the way, in the millennium, when you plant a tomato seed, you gotta wait for the plant to grow up. The plant's gonna grow up. You don't have to go through green, yellow, orange, red. It'll be red right away. That's the blessing. That's the curse being removed. There'll be no thorns on the roses. If your nation is decreasing, <coughs> buying twelve billion dollars in debt, <coughs> but we're doing good. Uh, you're not praising God if you're on a decrease. If you had primary a lot of your population wiped out by a flood and earthquake and you know you got radioactivity now and, and pre-cooked fish as you catch them you're not praising God oh those Japanese people praise God not the God of the Bible That Bible says right there, we just read, you praise the Lord, you're going to get an increase in the land. You know, when they praise God in David and Solomon's time, it says in, in the streets of, of uh, Israel, they were, in Jerusalem in particular, it was the, the stones were, the silver was like stone. There was vast wealth. Solomon had spices that were just Beyond imagining, it was a storehouse, storehouse for all the the caravans that come into Jerusalem. It was the place to be. It was God. There was supplies. You know what people come to America for today? Free paycheck, free health care, free everything. Hey, I can pick any God in the yellow pages I want. I just don't want to hear that guy on the street preach about Jesus. I don't want to go to school that has a Bible. Get it out. And don't you dare have the Ten Commandments in the courtroom because I'm a guilty thief. That may hurt my feelings. The yield, then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, get that? you got to have the God of the Jews, Jehovah. If your God ain't Jewish, because some of you have a black Jesus. Some of you have a white Jesus. My Jesus is Jewish, short and brown with black hair. If you got a black Jesus, you got the hellish devil, satanic, antichrist Jesus. And Paul said there are there's another Jesus right into the Corinthians. If you got a white Jesus, you got a phony. You are believing in a lie. 
John 8, 44. I'll speak the truth and tell you the truth, and I don't care how you feel. God is pleased with me. Read your Bible. You'll see the truth. Read the description. The description of Jesus in here. Our own God, the Jewish God, shall bless us. Well, he's not blessing them now. It's got to be later. Because they rejected him. They rejected the Messiah that God has provided them. Their Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ. He fits 100% all the prophecies spoken about. And he's going to fulfill all the second advent prophecies. And all the millennium prophecies. But God will never give up on the Jew. Don't you believe a church that says that? That's a lying church. God shall bless us again, said twice. Us. Who's the us? The Jews. Even our own God, it said in verse 6. Talking about the Jews. God is going to bless the Jews. And all the ends of the earth. Okay, he's going to bless us, the Jews, and all the ends of the earth. Everybody, because it says... All the ends of the earth shall fear him. In the millennium, God's going to bless all. Worldwide. But you have to fear him. It's a stupid thing I haven't seen recently, but you know the, bump, the stickers, no fear. You're a fool. You want to put that in the back of your car? Okay. Let me go up north and get one of those snow plows, the big state ones. And you go on the highway at 55, and I'll come up behind you at 85 miles per hour. I'll see how much you have no fear. I'll disprove your sticker right away. God is a merciful God that will bless us. He will increase us. He will praise. He will judge. He will govern the people. But we must give him the praise. We must honor him in everything. I just got a job the other day. Finally, I'm driving away. I'm not even out in the parking lot. I'm saying, thank you, Lord. He say, no, the, 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 the store, the, the manager hired. No, God did. God gave me the job. Because God could have went down and said, take that application. No, take that application and throw it in the garbage can. Whatever God did, I don't know what he did. My name came up. God had me speak what I needed to say to impress. And it wasn't me that got the job. It was God using me to, to shut up at the wrong times and to speak at the right times. Yes, God can do that through me. I give God the credit. Do I always give God the credit? No. I have failed there. I have foolishly at times given the credit to something else or someone else and sinned and done wrong. But giving God the praise as I do, I have seen increase. And blessings beyond count. The song is, Count Your Many Blessings. I couldn't. There isn't enough college rule line three ring notebook paper. If I drew on both sides ten columns and started listing. There, there, there is no... Mount 
in 46 years. Even before I was saved in April April 21st, 1987. You got to give God the praise. If you don't, you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment. And you'll have to give an account of what got the praise that God deserved. Now, can you imagine having to give an account to the God that died for you, that loved you, and say and asking that God ask you, why did you give that or that person my praise something to think about praise him praise him until the next Sunday night game or when my unsaved family comes over again praise him praise him Oh, I stayed up too late last night. The preaching boring he has for money. I'll praise him Sunday night. Who gets the praise and who gets the honor in your life? Oh, Lord, my God. Some wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come.